welcome. I hope you're having a great uh, Friday morning here, January 28th. Um, and welcome to the first session of your day. This one is the Regional Class Research Vessel uh, project session. And we're gonna be talking about flux at work. Um, it's a bit of a pun there. It's not related to the flux capacitor from Back to the Future, um, but we're gonna be talking about flux in a system. And we have a special guest with us today, um, a researcher on the project um, and graduate student. Anna, do you mind introducing yourself and just saying a little bit about yourself and what you are doing on the project? Yeah, hi everyone. Uh, my name is Anna Hughes and as Adam said, I'm a, uh, the graduate student on the RCV, RCRV project. Uh, my specific role is I'm looking at two of the sensor systems on the vessel uh, that we're going to learn about a little bit in a moment, but I'm looking at sort of the exchange of carbon dioxide between the atmosphere and the ocean and how we measure that. Awesome. And then before we get going today, I would like to send you to this jam board that I can share with you. And I would like you to think about um, if someone asked you what is flux in a system, um, you can say, I don't know, that's perfectly acceptable. Or I know when I hear this, I think of um, something related to like a change in something. Um, I know that's definitely what I was thinking. I'm gonna copy this link and send it your way. And then also just thinking about everyday systems that you might interact with. What are some that you might interact with? Um, I put an example for myself out there, a fish tank. Since uh, in the past two years, I have started taking care of a fish tank with my, my son. <laughs> so that is definitely one that I'm interacting uh, at least weekly to do water changes. Oh, yeah, I see a lot of, uh, I know in kind of the fifth grade, the parts of the body and anatomy or like the, the classic uh, garden that they might have. Schedules, yeah. Awesome. Um, so feel free to unmute yourself. And if there's anything that stands out that you would like to share, um, you can. If not, I will kind of, kind of summarize um, what I'm seeing. So um, I like the positivity of I hope you will teach us. I hope so too. Just want to call out to that one. <laughs> um, and then I see other ones about change, movement, not sure. Flux sounds like movement. Um, change the variable. So we are getting to the dynamic nature of flux. We are going to be talking about a change. Um, and then also the everyday systems. And this will be helpful in this activity as we get to thinking about what everyday systems do your students interact with that they can maybe find a flux in. Um, so now let's go back over to our presentation here. Um, we're going to skip this question. I'm going to delete that. Um, just so you know, if you were curious, uh, I still answer it. Um, the RCRV will have over 200 sensors on it, um, which is kind of cool. And those will be measuring all sorts of changes in a system. Um, December 2022 is the launch date. Um, there'll be about a year of trials. So um, hopefully by December 2023, it'll be out working on the Oregon coast, which will be super awesome. Um, if you want to find a project update, um, you can click on this PowerPoint, and also there's live webcams of the ship being built. They actually just attached the uh, mast to it. So it actually does look like a ship now when you go to the webcams. They're kind of building it in three parts, modules, um, which then make up the parts, which then it all gets put together. Um, all right. So, um, Anna, sorry. Um, do you mind giving us your definition of flux is how you would talk about it? Um, in relation to the RCRV? Yeah, uh, for sure. So in, um, I guess in my understanding, so flux, we define flux as the movement of a quantity. So the units of it, we have this quantity and it's amount, um, amount per that passes through an area over a unit of time. So we have a set period of time that this quantity that you can define um, differently depending on the system that you're focused on that passes through um, an area, so just a surface over a set period of time is, I guess, how we define flux. So on the RCRV project, the system that I am currently focused on is the carbon cycle, part of the carbon cycle. I am looking at sort of this lower 
center part of the box, which is the interaction of carbon in the form of carbon dioxide between the atmosphere and um, the surface ocean. And so there's a lot of cool chemistry that happens there. And that's sort of the focus of my project as part of the system. And again, the quantity in my system that I'm focused on is carbon, carbon dioxide. So, and as we keep working through these activities, we're gonna keep teasing about, teasing out the dynamics of flux. Um, so there'll be more opportunities for clear definitions and thinking um, just coming up. Um, so today we are gonna be discussing, like I said, what is flux? I'm gonna give you an example of a system um, that I'm familiar with. And then you'll be breaking into a group activity where you will be giving a system and kind of identifying its important parts. And if you could measure a change in something in that system, kind of the flux, what would it be? And that'll give you like a specific item, a special quantity. Um, and then um, what insights if you actually measured that? So we're gonna talk about that. And then we have our movie star here, Anna Hughes. Um, who has a really cool video coming up about their work on the project and the sensors that they use to study flux and why they study flux. So this is a fun activity to get you thinking about, you know, what is flux in an everyday system? Um, then going and finding a sensor probably in your house. I saw some of you put house. Um, and what kind of flux is that measuring? Um, and then we're gonna be talking about the RCRV connections. All right. So when we're talking about flux in a system, sorry, um, in this activity here, let me move your, your faces. I gotta find a spot on my screen where, where I can still see everyone. All right, um, so what goes in into the system and out of the system? NGSS talks about systems as important parts. Um, inputs and outputs comes in in the middle grades, but the essential part in the elementary is if these parts do things that the whole, um, the parts do things together that they could not do on their own. It's kind of the, the intro level, the systems thinkings, and that goes into the identifying important parts. So here, <clears throat> an activity you might be familiar with is uh, growing a potted plant in the classroom. And you'll have one in sun, uh, one in sun and water, and one with just water. And so those are systems right there. Those are closed systems. Um, you could probably look at sunlight, water, temperature, um, growth. That would be the changes there with flux. The fine period of time, I'm sure you kept some logs <laughs> if you did an activity like that. Um, and what can studying flux tell us? It can tell us about nutrients, growth, and those sorts of things. So flux, just to get the definition out of the way, is a term we use to describe the amount of something passing through the surface or an area over a defined period of time. Um, so if you're looking with growth of a plant, you would be looking at the buildup of of carbon um, in the plant as it grew and uptook that from the nutrients. And flux can be used to describe many different qualities, quantities in a system, um, like carbon dioxide, heat, energy, volume, and mass. So I have an example here to work through with y'all. Um, what goes into the system and out of the system? If you had a fish tank, or maybe you have a fish tank in your house, um, what are you putting into it and what is coming out of it? Feel free to add that to the chat. What are you putting into it and what are you taking out of it? I am taking out dirty water. I know that one for sure. Fish food in, fish food in, out algae, yeah. Uh, in food plants, yep. Maybe some feeder shrimp, gravel, yeah. So that goes in. So we would need to add then the fish to our kind of picture here. Um, we would also want to add the time. So I see, I see a lot of things about clean water, oxygen. Um, if we wanted to measure those changes, so we put the fish in, we put the poop in, uh, we put the, I have some kind of fish food in those circles right there. Um, oxygen in, yep, that would be from the flow. I need to go find a new icon for that. Um, also the fish poop, when it breaks down, it turns into an ammonia, which is really toxic for fish. And then it needs to be broken down to nitrate and nitrite. So there's a whole other level of the system going on. Um, but just thinking about those important parts of the system, um, I think you've got it all there. So we got the water, the oxygen, the food, light. Yep. Awesome. So now what specific quantity do we want to learn more about? And usually you've probably already identified it, like you could measure the oxygen. I could measure how much water I'm taking in or taking out over this period of time. 
Um, so what is that specific quantity here? Um, in clean water, oxygen in. Um, so I might want to measure for me the amount of fish food in um, and then kind of how dirty it gets just to know if I'm overfeeding them. That could be an example. Now moving down here, what is the defined period of time would you use? So think for a moment um, it, on the one that you suggested, whether it be oxygen or light, what is a defined period of time you would like to use? These could be things like seconds, minutes, days, weeks, months. What is something that you're thinking about? For me, hours, yeah, days, daily, or they might die, daily. Yes, yes, yes. Um, when you do set up an aquarium, you have to let it cycle. And I um, forgot to add fish food to start my fish cycle to make the, the breaking down of ammonia important. Um, and I was testing it several times a day to check the ammonia levels and just kept doing water changes. And I had one of those fish made it, but yeah. So thinking about the time. And now this is the part that, that, that is really interesting, especially for work. Um, such as with the carbon cycle and climate change with the carbon dioxide or ocean acidification, is what can study that specific, the flux. So the changes, the buildup um, in and out of the system, what can that tell us about the system? So if you wanted to measure oxygen daily um, or ammonia buildup, let's see some other answers we had in here, or fish food, what could that tell us about them? Or um, I see Tim added animals. So if you wanted to just track how many of them were, were, you know, what you felt to be active and happy, what would that tell us? So my example was the fish food. And if I am overfeeding. And I'd want to know if I'm overfeeding it. Because if I overfeed it, then I'm going to have to do more water changes. Am I cleaning the tank enough? Yeah. How healthy is the system? Yeah. Um, in ecology, there are certain indicator species that tell us the system's doing really well. So in spring, I'm always happy to see dragonflies out or uh, some good uh, amphibians along a stream that tells us that things are going well. Um, but yeah, how healthy is it? All right, so this kind of systems thinking is really what NGSS is getting at in the sense that, you know, what are the important parts of it? What are they doing together? And then by looking at the flux of a system, we can know the limitations. Um, we can also know inputs and outputs and how those change and kind of see the system in, in more of a dynamic nature and going. So, so you are gonna get started by doing this example that I did very similar in small groups. And you'll see some supports here. Um, we're gonna do it in about oh, 10 minutes for our groups um, before we come back together. Um, and you're going to ask, oh, this keeps on resetting it here, but we're going to ask those four same questions and you will see them. And what I'm going to ask you to do is you'll be put in breakout groups. Your breakout groups are going to depend on the length of your hair. <laughs> so if you have short hair for you, what you would consider short in your long um, hair history of having hair, um, you could, you will be in the group with a basketball game. So there's a basketball game going on. Um, these are some things you might want to kind of, you know, be important to the system, depending on what you want to know about it. So playing basketball, well, you're going to get tired. You're going to lose energy. Um, hopefully you had enough food um, before the game to have a lot of energy, some good healthy nutrition. So thinking about that digestive example would be really interesting here. Water, um, you know, sweat loss, not playing. So maybe you played for a little bit and then you didn't play. Um, so you kind of, you know, recovering a little bit or how many points for um, and fouls in basketball. You're only allowed to have five fouls and then you're out of the game. Um, and then what kind of time scale would you use to measure that? And then group two, you medium hair folks, <laughs> um, a farm. So this is kind of a classic setting of a farm of a system that we might think about. Um, again, you have some icons to play with that you can add to the system about what you would like. Time period, again, what are you looking at? Um, you know, it could be the amount of eggs that the chickens produce, the amount of offspring calves have, um, how much, you know, feed and fertilizer and, you know, uh, cow manure is always something that comes with having a farm. Um, group two, um, actually, I think this one should be group three. Yep, group three. 
So long hair, city street. You might have seen this example before in books related to the carbon cycle. Um, so things like factories, cars, gas stations, homes, uh, temperature. You can also, if you want, um, find other icons on the internet with that copy and paste if you like. But I know working with students, it's nice to give them just examples right away. Um, and then also, here are some arrows that you can use and add to it. You notice how we were talking in the fish example about the fish eating food and then producing something and then having to do something. So you can kind of use these arrows. You have a back and forth arrow. You have you know this to the right, to the left, and the circle arrows. If you'd like to use those, you can. And then um, for students, like to give them you know stars. So something that could be important, they just might want to star it and talk about it later. Um, thought bubbles. So you might have a question or something you're thinking of. Um, and a um, kind of a call out, like a statement. So these are kind of fun ways for students to start talking about a system, um, one of those three systems to kind of see where they're at, how are they thinking about them. And then when you come back, we're gonna work our way through those questions. So Emily, can you give us breakout groups one, two, and three? All right. So this is up to you. So room one will be the basketball. Group two and group three, uh, group two will be the farm and group three will be the city street. Um, when you get into the Google folder, you will see your resources right here. When you click on them, you will have those select slides of instructions, the picture and icons. All right, and if you don't know which room to join, um, just go ahead and pick whatever one interests you. Right now, no one is in room number one with the basketball, <laughs> but we have um, two folks in room three and four folks in room two. Awesome, welcome back, welcome back. I hope you enjoyed your um, activity. That is the, the first activity that we had here. So uh, for question number one, would anyone um, and hopefully quickly, like to unmute, what was the, the an in and out of their system they were thinking about? Yeah, the in with water and out with sweat. Okay, yeah, so perspiration during a basketball game. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, no one wants to slip on the court there. Um, and then, so, um, I heard from some groups, so from the either the city street group or the farm group, what was the specific quantity that you select to look at? We kind of went back and forth on, on time. That's what you're talking about, right? So uh, we, we can go ahead to oh, that sorry. one. Yeah. Was that oh, what no. you were? It's okay. fine. Okay, so we <laughs> talked about like it could be measured on time for like a day or a year uh, because farm cycles it depends like if it's a, like a dairy, it might be a day, you know, where you're milking the cows daily and you need to measure the output of that or the input. And then, or like a yearly basis where you plant the seeds and it takes, you know, and then you harvest and then prepare for the winter. Mm -hmm. But that's not what you asked, I'm sorry. I miss Oh no, it's hard to separate questions one through four um, because um, in a sense, when you, when, you, when you ask for students' explanations, because it's, I want to measure this because this happens, and usually that this happens happens over a certain time period, and by that point, they've identified important parts of the system, um, what the quantity is, and then what the, what the timeline is, and inadvertently, they share, you know, why is it important to tell us about that? <laughs> so they kind of build that um, evidence-based explanation. So City Street, what was your example? The city street folks, are you there? One of the things we looked at was um, the quantity of people mm -hmm. coming in and out of the city. I'll let somebody else share what they were working on. We kind of worked like in little mini teams on different parts. Oh, that's fine. Um, I just want to, we, I want to be conscientious of the time. And that's why I'm kind of moving us through this pretty quickly. Um, the next activity after this would have been a scavenger hunt. So now that students have talked about a system, they would go and find a sensor and think about what system that is and what's it's measuring. Paula's here. Paula, this would be an extension of that sensor scavenger hunt. 
Um, Cause I know that when we tried that one out, we were like, well, what do they do with that information? What do they talk about it? And now they can talk about it in terms of the change in their house. So I put the sensor that I have on my fish tank that tells me when the water gets real bad. <laughs> and then I know that someone added temperature or their car. So it could be like miles per gallon. So they would need a sensor for, um, or the fuel tank. So those would be kind of add-ins to those everyday systems that they have. So um, again, we're gonna get to the connection of this, but I just kind of want to move through. This is the CO2 example that we have. We're a little bit at time. So I'm gonna jump to the video because that's what we're here for. Um, and we're gonna talk about how RCRV uses flux. All right. And let me share my audio. Sound, there we go. Hi everyone, my name is Anna Hughes and I'm a first year graduate student at Oregon State University where I study ocean chemistry. Here we are today at the project warehouse for, known as RDESC, where we are receiving, calibrating, and testing equipment for the RCRV project. RCRV stands for Regional Class Research Vessel Project, which is the project that I am currently working on. In your activities, you have been learning about flux in different systems. Flux is a term that scientists use to describe the amount of something that is passing through a surface or unit area over a defined period of time. Flux can be used to describe many different quantities in a system, such as molecules like carbon dioxide, heat or energy, volume, and mass. I research ocean chemistry, focusing on the flux of carbon dioxide between the atmosphere and the ocean. This is a really important area of research because changes in the chemistry of the ocean are expected to impact marine ecosystems and other Earth systems. The amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere has been increasing over the past 50 years. This has led to an increase in the amount of carbon dioxide in the oceans. In the ocean, carbon dioxide reacts with seawater, which increases the amount of carbon dioxide in the oceans and changes ocean chemistry. This is a process that we call ocean acidification. Because the Earth is a system, we can study the flux of carbon dioxide between the oceans and the atmosphere to better understand how increases in carbon dioxide will affect ocean chemistry and impact marine ecosystems. Now I'm going to show you two of the sensors that I use to research carbon dioxide flux. This first system is known as the underway Apollo PCO2 system. It measures the amount of carbon dioxide that is in the sea surface by pumping in water from the sea surface through this tube and filtering it. The second sensor is the Picaro analyzer. This pumps in air from the atmosphere and tells us the concentration of carbon dioxide that is in the atmosphere. These sensors work together to tell us the amount and direction of carbon dioxide flux. For example, if the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere is greater than that in seawater, we know that CO2 is fluxing from the atmosphere into the ocean. In reverse, if the amount of carbon dioxide in the ocean is higher than the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, we know that carbon dioxide is moving from the ocean into the atmosphere. In this example, the flux is being caused by a process known as diffusion. These are just two of the over 200 sensors that will be on the RCRV. As you can see, flux is a very important concept for scientists who study systems, particularly Earth and ocean systems. The RCRV will have over 200 sensors, providing large amounts of data and empowering scientists to study all different kinds of flux. Monitoring flux in Earth systems is very important for tracking changes in the world around us, specifically like those related to ocean acidification and climate change. In my work with RCRV, I hope that these research tools will help you and other scientists to think about the different types of flux in the systems around you, in your house, at school, or in nature. Ask yourself, what is important in this system? How can we measure the flux of it in this system? And what could be the possible positive or negative impacts if we altered that system? Keep up with the RCRV project by following us on social media. All right, so that is kind of, we're kind of pretty late on our meeting today. <laughs> we're about three minutes over. Um, so thank you. This is our RCRV Flux lesson. Um, there's some more information in the PowerPoint slides about the systems that are there. Um, and yeah, there's also, before I let you all go, there's some student resources here for worksheets um, and keywords as well that are helpful to review. Um, for you and for them. There will be a formal lesson write-up coming um, next week when this all gets posted. So then if you could go to that Jamboard,
because now that we're at the end of this session and just think about um, what is a good ki kid friendly definition of flux? What is the, how would you say that to a student if you could think about it? Um, and then what are some everyday systems do your students interact with? Um, so if you kind of had to direct them to a system around them and kind of position them as, you know, already knowing and interacting with these things, what systems would those be? And uh, what is a good kid-friendly definition of that? So while you're um, kind of in that Jamboard thing, for those of you that um, see my screen, I'm going to pop it over to NGSS just to give you an idea of how NGSS talks about systems. Um, and these are kind of the NSTA hubs group of related parts, the whole um, do a job that the individual parts cannot, and describe in terms of interactions. The inputs and outputs comes in middle grade. And then when you're analyzing and measuring and thinking about the limitations of models, that gets into high school. So it's a very fun concept that I think Flux uh, gives some dynamic, <laughs> dynamic nature to. Is a school a system? I would argue yes, the school is a system. I would be in the yes category for that. Um, we could look at folks in and out, like grad graduation rate, I know is a very important um, indicator in that system. Um, but that would be a good question. Yeah, I think it definitely is. And then you have food that you eat, you know, at lunchtime or at recess, you expend energy and then you eat lunch at some point or school supplies, you use school supplies and then you learn. So I think school is a great system. Yeah. And then we thought about um, like congestion, like a house, like just people in and out of the house <laughs> at certain times of the day in the morning um, or, you know, going coming back and forth. So Anna, in your work, how do you decide the bounds of the system that you're looking at? Um. Yeah, Adam, that's a great, a great question. Uh, that's one of the most important parts about systems thinking is sort of defining the bounds. So in a school, you have very specific bounds. Um, in the systems that I sort of look at, I guess um, the bounds tend to be pretty narrow where I just sort of look at like the meter of the atmosphere above the ocean and then a foot or even less, maybe even 10 centimeters of like the surface ocean. And those are sort of my bounds because once you get um, outside of those bounds, uh, the inputs and outputs can change and you have other things that you need to consider. So bounding the system is super important in terms of thinking about what parts are as are incorporated into your system. And so this can give you some ideas of that um, sensor kind of system scavenger hunt. If you had students in school, where would you where would you take them <laughs> to see? Hey, we want to you, you know is there something measuring flux? I'm sure um, for me, I know at my house I thought of uh, like the meter, so my water meter, <laughs> how much water is being used in the system? Yes or no? Um, over certain time periods, uh, temperature. Um, so I could look at a thermos. For the digestive system, we could look at bathroom breaks and uh, school lunches. <laughs> the way things get circled around. Yeah. And so the, for those of you that puts um, cycles and the way that things get circled around, conversion, um, conservation of energy and matter is uh, like flows in systems is another major concept. So yeah, so definitely, Definitely in that one, because uh, here we'd be looking at the flow of molecules and the energy related to those bonds. Um, and then also the physical energy of the water churning um, and the diffusion of it. Excellent. All right. So if you had to do the lesson of looking at the, um, basically this is the question that I ask you, what would you like me to change about those? So thinking about, those cards um, will kind of be a printed scene. 
and then items that they could add or draw, and then those arrows would be there for them to place them to show connections. Um, how, what are things that you're thinking about that, that would really make this lesson um, good for your students and usable for you? Um, so if you have any suggestions there, feel free to add them from that Jamboard link. Um, and then I just wanna open up the floor for, for any questions you have of myself, Anna, or about the RCRV project in general. Um, our social media pages are really cool. In person or online, um, I will I will take suggestions on both. <laughs> let me make let me make a uh, a text box then over here for online suggestions. We can kind of group them, and then I'll make another text box for for in person kind of over here. Yes, the bilingual Spanish English. Thank you. More vocabulary. Yeah, so the key words, I'll pop over as you're adding more that I that are in the student support ones. There's one for system that I pulled, inputs and outputs, flux, what is a sensor? And then I was trying to think of last time we spoke, I heard, um, you know, like what would be the most limited vocabulary keywords to help? Um, and so I made a short list of just the RV Tawny um, and RCRV just saying what it is. Um, and then sensor. Um, so these were the ones that I thought would be keywords. If you know more keywords that you feel would be important for, for youth in your clubs and school, um, please add that also to the Jamboard. Pictures on cards. Yep. That is the goal for in-person, kind of a fun sorting game. I'm gonna move that whiteboards for in-person. More vocabulary, I'll put that one in the middle since that one kind of goes. For both, still some bills. Is that video? Yeah. I just want to go back to this one. Um. So this is the lesson that we didn't do. Um. This is kind of second activity, and that just positions them kind of in the sense that they learn something through the sorting and making the model, and then they get to go find something that they're an expert in, and then, um, they get to come back and kind of watch the summary video. So that was our idea of kind of the lesson flow. Um, I just wanted to highlight what we didn't have. And then also in the student resources, I have the student one activity sheet, which has those kind of questions for them to use. Um, the activity sheet for student uh, for number two follows the sensor scavenger hunt and then those keywords. Um, and then right here, you find the PowerPoint that we've been working from. Oh, and then I'll get this written up and posted. Video to feed prior knowledge, okay. So yeah, I can probably find a good intro video about systems in general. I also can link some RCRB videos about the project and like why it is there. So is there anything else that you'd like? I see a lot of folks have added um, a lot to each slide. Um, you can kind of go back between each slide up here um, if you would like to go back to the, the earlier ones. Um, but other than that, um, we've kind of moved through. Um, are you gonna be able to tour the ship in the spring? I really hope so. Um, while they're doing the ship trials, um, we are planning on having um, a challenge um, over um, at Hatfield. I know at the elementary, we do a lot of regionals. Um, and then I know at the middle, um, I believe we acquired funding to have everyone come to OSU. So I'm excited to see what those are. We'd also like to have a teacher workshop over there. Um, but as I know Hannah, Hannah can attest to, um, there are several ships that are out of commission right now. Um, and so there is kind of a long list of scientists wanting to get on to do the shipboard research. So we'll see when it's in port and when we're able to kind of have access. The exhibit that y'all helped with is completed, um, which is super cool. Um, so we'll definitely hope uh, be able to see that. And I think 2023 is the idea of having a lot of stuff over there. But that is our plan. <laughs>